The question on everybody's mind, what is FitAsk and how do you shoot it? I can certainly try and answer the first bit for you. Um, so it's a, a gun down version of sporting. It's more varieties of targets. So you're gonna see more singles with full use of the gun, um, combination of report and simo pairs. It's kind of like a cross between compact or sport trap and English sporting, just with a much more diverse range of targets. Shot from a low gun position, so you're not allowed to move the gun until you see the target. Other than that, Let's go around, give you a rough idea. Let's go. So single C, that's your crow target that we shot earlier on. So we so, are just shooting singles, full use. Yeah, so if we had, a, we normally obviously have a full squad. So you come in, if you're doing it properly, first man in the hoop would see the target. So you go through the singles on the board, single C, single B, single D, single A, looking at them. Mm -hmm. I would then shoot them. I'd come out, you would come in as man number two shoot the singles, we go through the squad, we then drop one down, so the man who was number two, which is you, will then become man number one for the doubles. So you'll come in, in this case, the first pair is a simultaneous pair, so you'll get to see the targets, the referee will show you them. You shoot your pair, which is CD sim and A report B, you rotate out, third man down goes, and you cycle through. So every time you come, each station's got a start for the singles and a start for the doubles. New station, new shooter, new shooter on the doubles. Make sense? Makes perfect sense. Are there any major do's or don'ts? What gets you disqualified? Um, cheating, filling your own scorecard in, that's quite frowned upon, I've heard. strangely. Um, no, but seriously, it's basically your gun mount. So yep. you've got to have a, a line just about there, give or take. The top of your stock has to be underneath that and touching your body. So there's a little advantage to being taller because your gun mount is shortened by comparison to your body. Uh, it's a, so it's a fixed distance. It's, I can't remember what it is. It's measured from the centre of your shoulder down. So to, be, to be honest, if you've got a big chest, it'll probably help you because a lot of the distance is taken out that way as opposed to vertically. But to all intents and purposes, bollocks, it's yeah. probably about the same. It's marginal gains. That um, the key thing is you've got to see the target before you start to move. So you can't go pull. And you also can't have a dry mount. So as soon as you're on the layout, oof. Don't even start me on dry mount. As soon as you're on the layout, you can't go, oh, just make sure that's okay. That gets you a warning. Yeah, do it you again. You get another warning, then you'll get dock targets. So as soon as you're on the layout, gun stays below, below the line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're doing your entire pre-shot routine in your head? Yeah. Cool. If you start talking it through, people think you're mental. Oh. So first target is the crow, which is C. So gun down, pull. That's moved. The wind is dead. The wind's moving the other way, yeah. down the valley, completely. Yeah, that's, that's swung round a lot, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, B is the left to right crosser, low. So again, gun under the line, back to a hold point, eyes back, pull, start the move. D, so same deal, gun down. So this is gonna be quite a short move. I hold reasonably high for it, let my eyes work early. Pull. A, this is going to be the looper, which is a standard clay now. Pull. So in theory, if we were doing this properly, which is difficult with two of you, I would now come out, mm -hmm. you would now come in, yep. shoot your singles, then we would go back out and swap. There's no point doing that because it's going to be the same each time. I'll shoot the singles. You'll shoot the doubles, we'll go and change it round. So we may as well shoot through the whole thing, Perfect, just yeah. for a, just so you know, that's the crack. And a squad is four blokes, five blokes? Uh, sorry, up to, sorry. Up to six. Up to six people. People, Not yeah. Blokes. It could be gender fluid. You could have a unicorn or as a... Attack helicopter. Trumpet. Um, so the, so you've now got CD SIM. That's on the SIM button. Yep. Again, normally you get to come in. Simultaneous pairs, you always get to view. Mm -hmm. So you can see the birds. Really care, don't want to waste the clays for them, so we roughly know where they're going. Pull. I'm worth trying that because I was a smart ass, and that's why you don't do it in competition because you can miss. So now I shoot the AB report. Pull. Very slow and steady. Uh, and within reason, the slower and steady you can be, 
the more consistent you're going to be because when you make short fast moves especially relative to reasonably steady targets if your timing goes off a split second it stops working how hard does this layout in fit ask standards um to be honest i mean this is this is a steady peg i would say the the last peg we do would be harder than most of the stuff you'd see internationally now peg two would probably be about what i would call par yeah. So this is what we call old system, where you're using the same targets and moving positions. I personally prefer it. There's the new way of shooting it, which enables more shooters to go through. Each peg is actually a self-contained set of traps. So rather than shooting the same machines oh, nice. and getting further and further away, it sort of standardizes it a bit, which I don't like. I like the fact that you can start off fairly steady. And by yeah. the time you get to peg three, you're looking and thinking, this is serious. But the targets are the same, so... Yeah, it's the same birds, but you're shot from a different perspective, rather than every layout sort of being set at about par. So I'd say steady, about par, hard. All right. Your go. Thank you. All right, so straight in, there's no points deduction for missing and using a second barrel kill? No, nope. kills to count, so full use of the gun. Perfect. Kills count. this would be a slightly harder bird to shoot from gun down because it's a shallower angle it's getting away from you yeah you'd normally shoot this gun up or gun just out the shoulder so see how you go Pull. beautiful shot then a is your looper cool so cd sim pair in theory, you shouldn't need to change anything with these, how you've shot them as singles. You've got the trap bird, which you've got all the time in the world, punk, and then punk. to transition. Shoot it properly, don't try and be a smart ass like I was and mess around. Boom. Beautiful shot. Okay, and then you've got A report B. So A is the looper, B is the crosser. Again, steady, controlled, make them easy shots. Nice. Ah. Perfect. It's amazing. Should have, uh, you know, shot it once I'd warmed up a bit. Yeah. So when you get into a, into a peg, a hoop, yep. what, what are you thinking? Are you just thinking, so I've seen the if, targets? If we're doing this, again, if we're doing this properly, we'll be running through, looking at each target. I'd be looking at where the batu is coming from. Obviously, I can see the trap. I know roughly where it's going because we've set it up. But I'd be looking at the bird, planning a first kill point, reading the target, hold point method I'm going to use to put onto the shot, all that kind of stuff. I'll be running through for each single target, running it, and then if I need to adjust it afterwards, that's the plan. So it's the same process we did on sporting, but it's harder because obviously sporting, you do it one pair four times. There's no real repetition here. So you've got to be a bit quicker on your on See, your in my head, this is easier because there's no repetition. Yeah, so it might be easier to get it broken in the short term, but you're trying to run the best possible shot each time. So sporting should get easier and easier as you go through because you'll be fine-tuning and getting better and better and better as you go along. Yep. Whereas you've got to get this right or wrong. There's no, there's so no way to find your feet. Perhaps would suit a game shooter? Possibly, yeah. Again, would depend on the targets, but maybe from a mental perspective. Yeah, of getting in, you've got one opportunity, kill it, bang. Yeah. Maybe. It's certainly more, it's more forgiving if you've got... A bogey inconsistencies bird. in your technique shall we say because you don't have to do the repetition what is a good score in fit ask nowadays oh. it's how long it's how long is a piece of string if you look at all the world championships they're generally speaking one in the sort of high 180s to low 190s out, out of 200. 200 so 95 ish percent is okay. you it's know, good oh yeah, yeah absolutely Not, um, but it's a lower score than sporting's top end events Excuse it me. used to be that fit ask was a lot lower scoring so the last registered fit as I shot was here it was actually about I don't know three or four years ago I suppose and I think I was a two day one and I won it on 86 because they were big hard wow. targets but you could also go to ones which won on 9900 straight it's because yeah. there's no there's no sort of consistency to what the targets yeah, are yeah. It's, it's all to do with the course it's who set the course yeah. so that's why people don't shouldn't really be focused I think on numbers and more on process and results yeah uh, they're focused on winning and if you win with a 50 that's still a win yeah, just means that we're really, yeah. really. See, all I think you should always look at how close you are to whether it's the top of your class or the top of the scoreboard in total, yeah. irrespective of what the numbers are. Do you when you work with it? Did you have like names of who are your benchmarks to beat at the time? Uh, genuinely, when I was doing it, all I was interested in was doing as good as I could, and my view would be if I did that, I'd win. It doesn't matter who. Yeah. When you're feeling good and you're happy with what you're doing, it doesn't matter who walks into the car park. You're like, yep, fine, nice. Who cares? But it's yeah. That's, uh, that's not necessarily easy to, to get to. Um, 
And I certainly wouldn't do it now. <laughs> no, I'll stay in. <laughs> nice. Wasn't going where I thought. Again, that's that picked up be, a bit. It's always picked up higher, maybe. Nice. That one came in to sit on the end of the gun. So again, we'd normally switch around here and swap out, but yep. there's no point. Uh, B report E, C so report that's B. cross a crosser. C report D, crow roller. Pull. Oh. <laughs> you don't like that one, do you? I hate it. Now, if you've got to point at the front edge of it and pull the trigger, I hate stuff like that. How much attention do you pay when you're shooting? As somebody who's at a fairly high level, is it utterly conscious? How much of it is just completely natural now? Oh, none of it, I would say. You're paying attention to every detail? Yeah, when you're doing it, you should be. Um, yeah, this is where the whole trying to shoot instinctively and naturally just doesn't hold any water as far as I'm concerned, certainly on, on this kind of stuff, you know, because if it was as simple as that and this whole thing of just look at the target in your hands, magically work out where the gun's got to be, I could give a gun to my mum and she'd be able to shoot 60 yard battoos. Well, newsflash, she fucking can't. And if you don't understand what the mechanics are of getting the gun X amount in front of a target and how to do it, it's not natural. Catching a ball is natural, but this is not catching a ball. The only analogy you could use here with catching a ball is maybe on that crow, yeah. as it comes up to the top and you're going, there it is. Now, when we start getting out to having to put four, five, six, seven feet on something, or more, as and you've place seen. place the shot into it. You have to understand where that bird's going, where your gun is, and how to get your gun to the spot that it needs to, to break the target. That's not natural. And do you think physical fitness has anything, any bearing on quality of shooting? I don't think it hurts, but you just have to look at some of the people that are quite good shooters to realise that it's obviously not... You can be very old it's and... not an enormous back. factor, yeah. OK, E. E bird. Batu. I, I just mounted a gun. Warning, first. <laughs> warning, warning. <laughs> first smack first yellow card. Pull. Beautiful shot. D is the little rolly thing. Nice. B is the crosser. C is your crow. On fire now. Oh. Then C report D, crow, little roller. Excelsior. Perfect. Right. What so silly miss. Last one. This will be one where we're going to try and go and stretch our legs a little bit to try and make it, you know, say that difference of moving between yeah, one, so two, three. You can three. really put me in my place. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, to be honest, at the minute, I think if anyone's going to get put in their place, it's not going to be you. So, same deal. I'll go in so you can have a chance at, at looking where they are. You can see A, B, C, D, E as singles. We'll run through that. So, obvious thing that's changed here is the distance. We've moved back. Well, probably 20 yards from the last peg. Probably 25. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a fair gap. So what was a fairly straightforward target can now get quite tricky. That D bird, I would say, there's, there's a few potential banana skins here. From a gun down position, the D bird especially, because it's quite a shallow angle, trappy and rolling. Um, a is gonna be a, a reasonable looper, but with the wind, again, I think that's probably pulled that in a bit, mm -hmm. so it's maybe not gonna look so bad. B is always gonna be tough, especially from gun down being flat. Uh, crow is the crow. D, Batu is going to be a good chunk, yeah. but shootable. So let's have a dig at them. Come on, big man. Nail them all. Nail them all. Pull. Oof. Pull. Oh, that's a pig. That's a tasty. Nice. I thought you were going to let it drop all the way and try and. No, uh, bottled out. D's my favourite one. Mate, that shot was deep. That was epic, by the way. That was oh, lovely. Thank Beautifully you. shot. Nice to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, e, so this is going to be a biggish batu from the right. Paul. He is a lightning. So we've now got E report D. So this is where in the pairs, you're only shooting gun down on the first target. You're allowed once you've shot your first one to keep the gun on your shoulder. So you don't have to disc, don't feel you've yeah. got to go bang, bang. And in the case of this D target, I would definitely keep it in my shoulder because yeah. it's getting away. Boom. 
Boom. Okay, let's go for it. Right, the speed with which you're macking E is unbelievable. Well, again. Or is it just anger? Are you just you frustrated? Just, just pure spite now. <laughs> uh, and now we've got AB as a pair, which last time. You shot the B bird first. Yeah, shot the B, then A. I think I'll probably go. I'll probably try that again because I think the wind's only got up more, I guess. Yeah. Ball. Nice. I actually think. Just chuck one of those bees. I'm doing too much with that. Yeah. Nice. Pull. Oh, just on the front just too edge. Much. Front edge stick. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. All right. So A through to E. Full use singles. Just Chuck. go steady. Take your time. Now we're shooting the tasty stuff. Get in. Oh, hats on backwards now. Beast mode, mate. That's what it's all about. <laughs> yes. Oh, we'll find the extent of my talent is moving outside of that range. Keep it smooth, don't panic. E, yeah? Yeah, right to left batu, yep. fair bit of pace. Pull. Good second. So E report D, that's your batu that you've just shot, and then gun down for the quarter and away, whatever you want to call it, teal or thing. Pull. Oof. And now uh, AB Sim. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Place the shot. It's a real discipline thing, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's Unbelievable not just, discipline. You know, it's this whole thing about trying to get away from just purely shooting. There's, there's instinct shots where you can get away with. That D would be one because it's a fairly short lead and you can just go to a spot and you can break it. Yeah. A lot of the other stuff, you'd be better off not trying to do that. I know you'll see me doing it a bit today because I'm just letting the gun go a yeah, bit. It's a bit but... fun, isn't it? It's, a, it's an interesting one, as we were saying in one of our many other videos that we've made today. The cartridges can kill it. Stop panicking. Oh, yeah. They're, yeah. they're always going to win the race. I mean, it's 60, probably 70 yards away, but... It... You put that in the right place, that will die every single yeah. time. <laughs> so now it's E report D. Better. That D bird's a isn't it? It is. From here. I'm it glad you agree. Easy. A, B. So the A you've shot successfully, and that's your first one. And if you were on this for a score, for example, and this was your last pair, yeah. one of the thoughts you'd have going in your head is, do I want to play it safe and make sure of half? Because you can always double barrel the A if you want. Yep. That guarantees, you know, still one point. How you approach this would depend on your mindset and your confidence in what you're doing. Because that B bird is hard. It is, 100%. So if you go for it first, you're already putting yourself a little bit on the back foot, but it's, if you go for the true pair, then it's doable. That is not doable. It's doable, but I think, especially with your natural timing, you'd be better going Another looper, crosser. Natural timing is a nice way of putting, throwing the gun, hopefully, for the best. Thanks, Yeah, mate. you know, help a brother out. Well, oh. you're shooting a gun up now, are you? Sorry. Yellow card. Yeah. <laughs> You've had enough of them. Yes, pair dead. I mean, that second one was... Dead. That's all, all it needs to be. Headshot. Perfect. <laughs> Fine. Right, thank you very much. No, it's been a pleasure. It's been a real interesting session, actually. I enjoyed it. Do you think people should take up Fitask more? You yeah, think I think to be honest, just people should get out and do what they enjoy doing. If you enjoy give Fitask, give it a go. See how you like it. It's a great discipline. Same with sporting. It, it suits different people for different reasons. At the end of the day, give it a try. It's it cost great fun, right? For yeah. the variety, it's much, much more exciting than sporting. Yeah, it, you've got a much bigger variety of birds going on. The, the scenarios that you see targets in are completely different, and it's a it's a great atmosphere doing some of the shoots. So, well worth giving a crack, I would say. Is it more internationally friendly than sporting? It's more, so sporting's really, to be honest, only shot UK, USA, and a couple of other people come over, but that's that's about it. Whereas Fitas is a true international sporting discipline. So if you want to be the best in the world, not just the best in England and America. Yeah, if you, if you said from the sporting disciplines, what's the, the sort of the perceived as the pinnacle, it would be the World Fit Ass because you've got a true representation of loads of different targets, but also loads of competitors across the world. Perfect, man. And you managed to win one year. I know, it's an absolute baffling, isn't it? It is. Well, amazing how 
you know, my dear problem. every dog, every dog has his day. Yeah, and now you're on TGS talking yeah, about, you know, broken clocks right twice a day, isn't it? Very true, mate. Very true. You put enough lead in the sky, something might something break. Something will run into it. That said, that hasn't proven true on certain targets today. Get out of mate! Get out!